Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use two limit switches to control the stepper motor with uh, the Excel stepper library. So a lot of things can be familiar to you if you are following my channel, because I usually use this device to demonstrate any kind of uh, stepper motor controlling uh, things. So what you can see here is uh, I made a sort of a linear carriage using a lead screw. And uh, here you can see this uh, shaft. It's not the best uh, contact. The bearing in this uh, shaft thingy is very bad. So yeah, you can see it. Uh, there is a flexible coupling here, which connects the lead screw to this NEMA 17 uh, stepper motor. And then of course we have the two limit switches. So you have to physically set these up according to your uh, requirements. And also you have to make sure that you know which is which in your software. So let's say this you call uh, limit switch one and limit switch two. Then whenever you want to manipulate something uh, based on which uh, limit switch is being triggered at the moment that you uh, have this software running, then you have to make sure that you know that, okay, now this side was triggered. So you, for example, have to switch the direction to the other uh, way and you have to do something else maybe, I don't know. But that depends on how you want to customize your code. And then this uh, stepper motor is controlled by the TB6600 uh, stepper motor controller. This is a very nice and uh, simple controller. It can work with uh, larger stepper motors than this, so it can easily drive the NEMA 23 as well. I tried it and it worked very nicely. And it just requires a few wires uh, that you have to connect to the Arduino. I will not really show any kind of wiring between the Arduino stepper motor and the stepper motor controller because I already explained this thing in a video in very details. So please check that video and go through it. It's like a few minutes, but uh, it worth the uh, time. And then the other thing, these uh, limit switches are already uh, soldered in a PCB, as you can see it, and it already contains uh, some uh, pull-up resistors, also an LED light here, and some connections and so on. So you don't have to really do anything. It has uh, three wires, of course, so you see red is very obvious that that's the power supply. So you just connect these to the five volt rail of your system. GND is the black. Again, it's very obvious that you connect this to the GND of your system. And then uh, the green is the signal. And what you have to do here is that in this kind of setup uh, where you have this kind of board, uh, the output pin, so this pin is at 5 volts, so it is at high level. So when you flip the switch, so there is a click, then this wire jumps down to ground. So you have to keep this in mind, so that's how you treat it. And you can program this in two different ways. Either you use the attach interrupt or you use just uh, the digital read functions and you read the status in every loop. If you are not using very quick movements, it's enough to use the digital read and you can do anything um, while the motor is moving, but then you have to program this in a smart way. So you are using the non-blocking instructions, but here I'm just focusing on the usage of the limit switches. So what I will show you that I show you how this works and uh, I just demonstrate it. And then I go to my uh, computer and I show you two different codes, which don't really differ, uh, except that uh, one is using the digital read. So directly reading the status of the output pin. So the green wires and the other is using the attach interrupt. So the code only considers these uh, switches when something is happening to them, but it's not pulling uh, the things continuously. Let's say it is a bit less exhausting for the software, of course, because uh, you get rid of the polling, but uh, the two different kind of uh, programming also requires different approaches uh, to the rest of your code and your hardware. So now what I do, I first just connect the power supply. So that's just a regular uh, variable power supply. So let's see, 
so the power is connected and now this is in the middle and I just have to connect uh, the USB to get some power to the Arduino and then the and then the code will start to run and then you will see. So clicked and switch directions and again. So you see this is fairly simple and uh, it doesn't do any harm but you have to make sure that your hardware is really doing the same as your code. So you have to make sure that you recognize these two switches properly in your code and you control the movement of the stepper motor properly in your code because otherwise you can mess up this and you can yeah, destroy the switches. And this is just my experience, but never trust the switches. Uh, so don't uh, put them directly in your final hardware, test them. Test them uh, for maybe hours and do this kind of practice. And if they don't fail, uh, not even once, uh, then you can put it in your final design. Because I had some problems with these kind of switches. And sometimes, despite that they have the hardware debouncing, which means that uh, if I just uh, simplify it, then there will be no ripple in the signal when it is changing the states. So the Arduino will be able to clearly decide whether it is at low or high level when it is uh, uh, switching. So sometimes these switches don't do uh, it properly. So it does two or three uh, status in the, in the switches and you will see it in the code that if I, let's say, quickly click twice, then the first click will switch the direction to the other direction. So let's say this carriage was approaching this switch. So now I click it. So then it will uh, change the direction. But if I click it again quickly, and this is basically when you don't debounce it, and there can be, it can happen that you see that it physically just clicked once, but uh, what the Arduino sees that there were like three, four, or even more clicks. And that will mean that uh, the carriage can flip direction. I, I will try to demonstrate it to you uh, by manually switching these pins. So you have to be very careful with this because you can destroy the switches or ultimately you can destroy your hardware. So now it comes. So it goes there. Now I wait for switch. So it switched. So it switches, you see? So sometimes if I, uh, now it should have switched directions, but it uh, doesn't do that. Now it does. So you have to be careful about these uh, switches because sometimes they don't do properly that we want. So once again, always check these uh, switches because they not working properly all the time. Uh, so maybe you want to spend some more money on these kind of things or just uh, look for some other codes or whatever. But uh, this is what I do here. So, so make sure that uh, whenever you click, that will be counted only as one click. But uh, you could see that uh, this uh, was working properly and I did not destroy anything. So now let's just jump to the code and I show you two ways of uh, coding and you will see how they work and how they are constructed so you can design your own system based on two or even more uh, limit switches. So let's look at the code now. So of course we have to uh, include the access tapper library. We will use that. And then uh, in this code, I'm using the attach interrupt. So I show you how to use the micro switches with the attach interrupt uh, function. 
and of course based on the description of the hardware we have uh, a few pins available for interrupting and in the case of the Arduino Uno and also in the case of the Nano we have the pin number two and pin number three for this kind of uh, purpose so we define the two limit switches and once again I have to emphasize that uh, if you want to make everything foolproof and more complicated uh, make sure that you know which limit switch is which so physically where they are in your uh, device so pin number two and three and here I do the trick with two uh, ball in uh, variables so the switch flipped will store the status of the of the flipping or when you click the micro switch with your uh, mechanism then uh, this will change its state but in the beginning it is false because we haven't yet uh, clicked and then the previous flip uh, that will be important for us for the direction so this status will store the status of the direction so it is if it is true then our physically defined uh, positive direction will be valid and if it is changing then uh, we define the negative direction and we start with true here and it, with each click this will change to false and when there is another click it will change back to true and then false and so on and so on. So then uh, here we have the uh, stepper so we need the eight, pin number eight and nine so pin number nine. Uh, this is where we connect the uh, stepper motor controller so this is the TB6600 uh, stepper motor and uh, Arduino connections so let's go to the setup so first of all let's take care of the limit switches so we use this internal pull-up resistor to debouncing but this has a hardware debounce uh, anyway so it has the resistor and the capacitor in the PCB but uh, nevertheless we have to do this or we do this and this, this line will be very important. So this part will take care of the limit switch one and it will start this uh, function. And you have to be sure that uh, you know what is the connection of your uh, limit switches. It can differ from switches to switches. So in my case, when the switch is open, so it is not clicked, then uh, the output is on high. So when I click the switch, it goes down to ground. That means that the signal will fall. So if you have it, the same di uh, same wiring or same kind of uh, limit switch uh, configuration, then you go for falling. If it is the other way around, so you have it on ground uh, by default and uh, make it high when you click it, then you have this as rising like this. But uh, I would not do that because uh, that kind of configuration is more prone to picking up the noise. So just go for falling and never ever go for change. Why? This is basically a sort of a square signal or square wave. And the square wave, if you just think about one pulse, contains a falling and a rising edge, right? That is two uh, things. And in this kind of uh, software, when there is one change, you switch the direction. So let's say you go from positive to negative. And then you uh, change the direction again, or, or in this case, there is a change in the signal again. Then you change the direction back from negative to positive, which means that your mechanism will continue its way and it will not bounce back from the limit switch, so you will destroy it. So either you choose falling or rising, but I recommend you to, uh, to wire up everything so you have the falling uh, configuration. And then I was using the serial just to check my software, but uh, you don't really have to do this. Uh, then we just set up uh, some default values for the access stepper library. So we will need a max speed. It's not necessary here, but uh, I just put it here. And then we need an acceleration. Uh, you should uh, give that value. I just use thousand times uh, acceleration or thousand. So that is steps divided by second squared and then we need the set speed here and you have to make sure that you use the set speed because with the set speed uh, you will be able to run your uh, code 
or run the access tapper library without the need of uh, defining a distance or target uh, steps. And then I just wait uh, a little bit. So when I plug in everything, I'm ready to, for example, interrupt the power supply if everything, if something goes wrong or, or something like that. And the loop is very, very simple. So these two functions will take care of the bouncing back and forth. So the stepper dot run speed uh, will just uh, run the motor and it will run indefinitely. So you don't have to define any kind of distance or any kind of target uh, number of uh, steps or something. This will just run the software or run the access stepper library uh, with this uh, speed that we defined in the uh, setup. So this will run as long as you are in the loop. And the flip check will take care of the uh, directions. And uh, why you need this is the following. So let's go back to the setup. So let's say that we click the switch. So this flip direction function will be uh, started, which is this one here. So then we first uh, change the status of this switch flipped uh, bowling. So then that goes to true and this will allow the flip check function to start. So here you see that if the switch flipped, so this variable is true, then we can enter this uh, thing here. And also we have to make sure that uh, we use this other variable, the previous flip. So here we flip the status of the previous flip. So if it was true here, then uh, it will become false. And if it was false uh, before initiating this part, then it will be true. And uh, this is another flag or checkpoint in the flip check. So let's say we clicked uh, the limit switch. So this goes to true. And this goes, let's say, from false to true. Because if you see it here, uh, these are the default values. So we go down. So now this goes true and uh, this goes uh, false or whatever. So we can enter and then this is just uh, a debug. So I was just using this to check the things. So we see what was the previous flip uh, status. If it's true, then we move in the positive direction with this uh, speed. So this is not a distance, this is just the speed. And this uh, will say that, okay, this is positive. So we move in a certain direction. And again, you have to check it physically, which is the positive direction with your uh, system. It depends on the uh, thread, whether you are using left-handed, right-handed thread, where do you put the switches and so on. So for me, I define this positive, but if uh, it is not, true, but if it is false, then uh, I have to change the speed to negative, but I go with the same speed. So that means that uh, after the first uh, switch, it will switch the direction. And again, uh, it switches the direction whenever it is hitting one of the switches. So then we are still within this uh, part of this code. So we have to switch this uh, back to false after we finished with everything. So that will allow this function to go back because if you would not do this, what happens is that let's say you start uh, everything. So the code enters this part. So it does one step and then it checks this thing. And if it's true all the time, then uh, it will always check these conditions, but it doesn't have to enter this as long as you haven't reached any of the switches on the uh, mechanism. So you have to make sure that we switch back the false. So the software, uh, the Arduino will be ready to receive the next uh, button click or the next uh, signal from the limit switch. So that's why I, put this back. So then we will wait for the others uh, flip. And then uh, this is the other code. And I don't show you the setup and everything because it's the same. So the beginning is the same. So I use the same pins 
but if you choose this kind of uh, source code or if you choose to use your system in a similar way, so not with attach interrupts, but with by reading the status of the pins, you should not use the pin number two and pin number three because they are valuable. So those can be used for other things where you really need the attach interrupt uh, function. So you should make these four and five, but I was just too lazy to change them every time when I tested the two different codes. So it was easier for me to see this. So this is the same. This is also the same, but after this part, if you remember the code, which I was showing you a few minutes ago, then I defined this attach interrupt part, but here it is missing because we don't uh, care about that. We don't use it and everything is the same here. So you have to define a speed acceleration and so on and so on. So that doesn't matter. And again, here uh, we run the motor with a certain speed and we uh, check the status of the uh, limit switches. And I, I use the same uh, function name, so flip check. But here, what we do is that, let's say we, we start uh, the Arduino. So first we do a step uh, with the motor. And then after one step, uh, we enter this function and we see what is the status of these things. And as I said, the limit switch is wired in the way that when you click or uh, switch the switch, then it goes from high to low. So it goes down to, uh, to ground. And then here, uh, when we check the flip, uh, we check the uh, switches, we see what is the status of the first uh, thing. And again, you have to check this physically, where is your switch and which switch is included in your code here in the digital read. So we read the status and if it is low, then we change the direction and then also we do the same with the other switch so if the other switch is low so we we basically push the button on the switch then uh, the speed will be defined in the positive direction and that's all and this goes very very quickly this kind of uh, condition checking so it is not interfering uh, with the movement of the stepper motor at least at these speeds and you can make some uh, fun stuff here. I, I just show you that uh, not necessarily here, but you can, uh, let's say, uh, make a new variable. So let's call it a new speed. And what you do here is, so what you do here is the following. So with each click, we want to increase the speed of the, of the stepper motor and let's say, we just want to increase it in the positive direction. I just show you one example and you can like uh, use that example in the other part. But here, what, what we do is uh, basically, we know that this will be the negative direction. So we have to make sure that this will be negative. And then here, what we uh, do is, let's say 2000 plus, and then we say that, uh, let's say switch counter, times, uh, let's say 200. So each time uh, that each time when we uh, click the switch, then the speed will be increased uh, by 200 steps. This is what it means. And what we have to do is that uh, basically, we just have to increase this. And of course, this has to be this has to be defined somewhere. So we just do this. So what we do here once again. So when we click the switch, we increase the value of the switch counter by one. And also I could do this. So we define the variable called switch counter and another variable called new speed. So what we do here is uh, when one of the switches is uh, switched, then we increase the switch counter value. So let's say it goes from zero to one and then we recalculate the new speed. So it will be still minus, but then now it will be uh, 2000 plus 200 because this is one times 200. So this will be minus uh, 2200 and that 
has to be written here. So then uh, the next uh, travel, when this will be running, uh, we'll go with 2200 steps. And then we go back to 2000, when the other side, when the switch on the other side will be triggered, and uh, we are approaching towards this switch. And again, this was previously one, so it will be two. So again, we recalculate a new speed. So this will be minus one times 2000 plus two times 2000. So this will be minus 2400. And uh, then that minus 2400 is written here. So we pass that value to the access stepper library. So then the code will know that uh, when we run the motor again, then we have to increase the speed to 2400 and so on and so on. And you can put it here. So you can basically do some sort of increasing oscillation. So you start from very slow speed and that each uh, change in the direction, uh, you increase the speed of the uh, stepper motor. So it will go faster and faster. But of course you have to make sure that your mechanism can follow this thing because uh, of course the motor has some sort of limitation and so on and so on. But uh, it should work. And I will upload this code but uh, I will just make a few comments here and let you know. But uh, if you watch this video you, you have to understand this code and why I put the comments here. So I hope that this demonstration was uh, useful for you and I could help you. And just again, a reminder, first make sure that your limit switches are placed at the correct uh, positions of your mechanism and the limit switches are working properly and also make sure that your code is working properly because I, I, I'm of course not responsible if you mess up your uh, thing, but uh, it would be not so nice to read that uh, something is broken in your system because you followed my instructions. So uh, yeah, if something is wrong, then uh, sorry, but uh, you could see that uh, it was working for me properly. And uh, if you can improve this code, I'm very happy to receive those uh, feedbacks and stuff like that. So please let me know in the comments if this was working for you and if it was clear. So yeah. So I hope uh, you learned something and uh, see you in the next video.